Baha'u'llah is the founder of the Baha'i Faith, and his followers are called Baha'is. Baha'is all over the world turn to the writings of Baha'u'llah each day for guidance on how to live a good life. Baha'u'llah was born in the city of Tehran in Persia in 1817, a little over 200 years ago. This is what the city of Tehran looked like then. Things were very different back then. There was no internet, no computers, no phones, no cars, and no trains. If you wanted to send someone a message, you had to send them a letter. If you wanted to go somewhere, you had to walk or go by horse. Here is a picture of Baha'u'llah's childhood home. His family were wealthy. His father was a nobleman. Baha'u'llah's mother was amazed at how well-mannered he was as a child. He loved nature and enjoyed riding horses. As a child, he had a deep knowledge and understanding of religion and the holy books. People were amazed by his intelligence and kindness and they loved talking to him. Even as a boy, he had a strong sense of justice and fairness. When Baha'u'llah became an adult, he was offered a well-paid position in the government. He refused this. Instead, he dedicated his life to helping the poor. Because of his kindness and generosity, he became known as the father of the poor. He encouraged people to be friendly and kind to everyone. He taught that everyone comes from the one God and should be treated with love and respect. He said that people should think for themselves and each person should search out the truth for themselves. Baha'u'llah encouraged people to devote their lives to the path of love and unity. Many people liked his teachings and started to follow them. Today these ideas seem normal. But 200 years ago, they were radical. At that time, the rulers of Persia were all men. They were emperors and kings. They decided the laws. They even told people what they could and could not believe in. This is very different to how things are now in modern democracies, where leaders are elected and people are free to decide their own opinions and beliefs. The rulers of the time felt threatened by Baha'u'llah's teachings, so they falsely imprisoned him in the CHR, along with many of his followers. This is the entrance to the CHR, also known as the Black Pit. It is an underground dungeon in Tehran. Baha'u'llah was imprisoned there for four months when he was 35. The CHR was a terrible dungeon. It was not like a prison we might think of today. It was not a building with windows or doors. It was a deep, dark hole in the ground. It was damp and icy cold. It was never cleaned and was full of insects. There were no chairs or beds. Everyone sat on the floor. There was no water to wash with and food for prisoners was carried down only once a day. Baha'u'llah was placed in stocks and heavy chains. The heaviest weighed 50 kilos. Here is a picture of what they would have looked like. The chains around his neck were so heavy that they left marks for the rest of his life. While in this horrible place, the maid of heaven appeared to Baha'u'llah. He said he felt divine energy rushing over him, that it was like standing under a mighty waterfall and feeling its power flow through him. The Maid of Heaven revealed to Baha'u'llah a special message that he was to share with the world. It was to be several years before Baha'u'llah would share this message with his followers. After four months in the Black Pit, Baha'u'llah, along with his family and some of his companions, were banished to Baghdad. To get there they had to travel over mountains in the freezing cold of winter, some on horseback and many walking. This would be the beginning of 40 years of exile. Baha'u'llah would never return to his native land again. 
This is what Baghdad looked like when Baha'u'llah arrived. He stayed there for 10 years. Many people grew to love him. People started to follow his teachings. The rulers did not like this and so banished him again, this time to Adrianople. For his last 12 days in Baghdad, Baha'u'llah stayed in the Garden of Rizwan, which means the Garden of Paradise. During this special time, he shared the message he was given by the Maid of Heaven in the Black Pit. He said God has sent many messengers to help and guide humanity. He said he is God's most recent messenger and his message for the world is one of unity. He said now is the time for the whole world to be united. Baha'u'llah said, the earth is but one country and mankind its citizens. It took several months for Baha'u'llah, his family, and about 70 followers to make the journey to Adrianople. During his time there, Baha'u'llah wrote letters to the kings and rulers of the world. He told them to hold a peace conference, reduce their weapons, agree on boundaries between countries, abolish slavery, and share out wealth more fairly. They refused, and Baha'u'llah said he would take their power from them and give it to the people. And so, over time, the power of the kings and rulers faded and democracies flourished. After five years in Adrianople, Baha'u'llah, his family, and his companions were exiled to the prison city of Akka, Akka is in modern-day Israel. Baha'u'llah was 51. Akka was like the end of the world, a final destination for the most notorious murderers, highway robbers, and political enemies of the rulers at the time. It was a walled city of filthy streets and damp, desolate houses. Akka had no source of fresh water, and the air was popularly described as being so foul that birds flying overhead would fall dead out of the sky. The authorities expected that Baha'u'llah and his companions would die quickly in the prison. Many people travelled from great distances and often by foot just to get a glimpse of him. Over time, the people of Akka grew to love and respect Baha'u'llah. In the last years of his life, he moved from the city to the countryside and lived in this house. Many people visited him there. In the early hours of the 29th of May, 1892, Baha'u'llah passed away at the age of 75. This is his shrine. Each year, thousands of people make pilgrimage to it.